All right, well, it's Friday again, Linda. Hot <laughs> word of the week go, baby. Woo! And guess who's not on this weekend? Me. 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 Woo-hoo! <laughs> it's supposed to be nice weather. Yes, it Shocking. is. Shocking. Shocking, right? right? Good for you. That's so nice. I think the leaves are almost peak right now. That's right. They're beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, we're actually, we're driving over, too. We're going to go see Alice's mom. So oh, cool. Nice trip. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be good. Well, anyway, um, so I was watching, um, I can't what show it was. I think it was Resident Alien. You ever watched it, Resident Alien? I've never seen it. Is it good? It's a great show, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's on the Peacock. Yeah. Okay. It's a sci fi show, but it's on the Peacock Network. Okay. It's actually, I think it's quite funny, actually. Okay. Allison, who hates science fiction, also thinks it's funny. Oh, well, that's so definitely. Right? Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm so, going to check that out. Yeah, so I think that. Um, I thought it was on that, but I can't remember. It was a different show. But anyway, but it was a joke. They reminded me, this is a wonderful gift that one of my patients gave to me, right? Very pretty. That's right. Okay. And so the, the, the question on the show, the joke was, why does everybody hate this type of Russian doll? Well, I don't hate it. I know. I'm just saying. Well, okay. okay? Uh, and why? <laughs> because... Why <did> <laughs> Because they're so full of themselves. Oh. Get it? Because oh. you open it, right? And there's another one, right? And then you open that same. one. And, and it's another maybe. one, right? So they're full of themselves. Get it? Yeah. The Russian nesting dolls are full of themselves. That's why they <laughs> that's why people don't like them, right? So I think <laughs> right? Hey. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time to work on this. All right, so in any case, I mean, doctors have been known to be full of themselves, haven't they? Absolutely. You're not going to say so. that. But not, you know not, some. Here. not here. Not here, right? Right. Yeah, right. And uh, there's an old joke that, that I sort of like, which is, you know, what's the difference between a, a reproductive endocrinologist and God? <laughs> what? At least God knows he's not a reproductive endocrinologist. <laughs> <All right. laughs> So, oh. right? I mean, it's, it, 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 it is a field that is it's certainly, it's wonderful when you get good news. It's, you know, it, it's certainly, everybody feels good about it, right? Mm -hmm. In a position you feel good about helping these people. And it's, it's your ego, you know, can sometimes, you know, you get, a little, watch it. get a little out of control there, right? But I haven't, I live with my ego control device. Yes. Uh, Allison is quite, quite happy to tell me that she has an earned degree as a PhD. And I have a technical degree because you know what they call the guy who graduates last in his medical school class? Which wasn't me, by the way. But it was. Okay, it was. What do they call him? Doctor. Right? Doesn't matter. I mean, you probably don't want that doctor, right? <laughs> That's right. True. Right. So, um, yes, doctors can be, can be a little bit full of themselves, right? And, and sometimes non physicians kind of take it upon them to like squash, you know, physicians down, put them in their place, right? And so I don't know if you've been following, you've been following any of this stuff at NYU about the organic chemistry professor. Have mm -hmm. you followed that at all, Mark? I haven't seen it, no. Right, so Maitland Jones, a very famous organic chemistry professor, and he was a Princeton for 40 years, and then he was a full professor, and then he retired. And then NYU hired him to come in and teach the or teach organic chemistry at NYU. Okay. Okay? And so uh, he just got fired from his job at NYU because the students signed a petition saying that he was too difficult. The course was too difficult. They felt it wasn't fair because they had, he was preventing them from, from being physicians by giving them bad grades and they couldn't get into medical school because they had a bad grade in orgo. And it wasn't fair that the course was so hard. Okay. So there's been sort of this debate about, you know, yeah. is there such a thing as is too hard a course, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, so, um, but I, he was my organic chemistry professor at Princeton. Okay, he's okay. taught the first semester, and then Dr. Taylor taught the second. Well, I'll tell you. So he, he, he was really, really amazing in terms of his lectures. They were wonderful. I mean, this is a man who loved organic chemistry, and his tests were really hard, because it wasn't just regurgitating, okay? It was actually, you had to have sort of looked at the material, learned the material, and then actually apply the material. And that's hard. That is hard. It's hard, especially in organic chemistry, okay? And so... And I struggled in that class. Okay, now I actually ended up, I think I ended up with a B plus, which I thought was a victory, okay, because it was a difficult class. Okay, mm -hmm. And then when I took Dr. Taylor's class, this was more cookbook. Like you, 
how you get from this organic chem organic compound to this one, and you'd memorize the different paths and you could apply them. And I was good at that. I just had, and I got an A plus on that. I got like almost high <laughs> five. That was good. But Dr. Jones's class, it was hard. Okay, I tell you what, and it was sort of a weed out class. You know, a lot of people dropped out of the pre med track because of organic chemistry. That was sort of a weed out. And the question was. At NYU, this has been the debate. Is it fair to have a weed out class where your doctor, your, your future doctor just can't be a doctor because they couldn't do organic chemistry? I don't know, it's a good question. But, so here's, here's the thing. So when I went to Dr. Jones's office hours, because I was upset about my first test grade, okay, I was just really disappointed in it. And I went to talk to him and um, he said, well, you know, we went over the test and we did you, you know, did you absolutely study you as hard as you possibly could and, and come to all the study sessions, do all those things, and if you truly believe that you did all those things, um, then I will give you a better grade, but you have to do one thing. I'm like, what's that? And he pointed to this large circular aquarium that he had in the corner of his office where he had a lionfish, which is a very poisonous fish with big spiky mm -hmm. spine, right? And there was a golf ball in the bottom of the tank. Get and he said, <laughs> reach in there and get the golf ball, I'll change your grade, no questions asked. I said, he said, but it's only, it's up to you to know, did you really actually study it? I said, you know, Dr. Jones, we're good. <laughs> I think I'm good here. So, um, and I, I didn't reach my hand into the tank well, to get funny. that. So maybe he said that to some of the NYU students, they didn't think it was funny. Yeah, I mean, people's sense of humor. I mean, let me just tell you, it's comedy's strange. dead. It's totally comedy's dead. I thought it was pretty funny. The guy said the pre med, stick your hand in with poisonous fish and get the golf ball out. I don't know. I think it was pretty clever. I mean, I certainly didn't do it. But now that, you know, now as a business owner and as we've been talking about different things and just working a day on, on, on filling out these forms, I'm thinking like there's some merit to this type of, this type of weeding out. And I'm thinking, Mark, that I maybe I should get a tank like that. And so if an employee comes in and, and says, Dr. Gordon, you know, I'm thinking that we need to talk about the schedule and, you know, we're just working these weekends. It's just so much work on us. And I'd say, you know, Linda, you're right, you know, and if you can get that golf ball out of the, out of the bottom of my lionfish aquarium, I'll definitely make those changes. Maybe? I think you should do that. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I mean, obviously, nothing else is working. I mean, obviously, I'm not intimidating the staff in any way. So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I need to come up with something that would work. No? The Maybe. leaf blower. The leaf blower. Yeah, that's right. Mm, that was good. That was a good <laughs> picture. That's right. That did like work. That. that did work. Yeah. I remember that so, one. Yeah, so, so, I think that, so, I mean, doctors like Russian dolls can be a little bit full of themselves, okay? It's important to have your staff where they, they keep you on the... We oh, no, keep you down to earth. Drag, yeah. drag down to earth, right? <laughs> but I think that, that maybe the lionfish approach has merit, and I, I might maybe I'll look into that, Mark. You, you may, you know, maybe you could look into that for me. So what do you think? You know, I, do that. I like it. Yeah, well, so. Well, anyway, I'll leave you that. Uh, you know, you know, um, can I get to choose who does the golf ball first? You definitely can. You can, I mean, yeah, can it exactly. be mandatory? Absolutely. I think it should be. I think, you know, if you want, you want to find out about your possible raise, you want to raise, golf ball. Right? Don't you think? More time off, golf ball. Right? Don't you think? You know, want to be able to participate in the 401k? Golf ball. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think, I, why not? Right? Why not? I like it. Yeah. Um, well, and in just, we've sure talked about doctors being full of themselves, which I'm not sure why I ended up talking about this subject today, but, uh, you know, that's what happens when you're... Because you're going to go give a lecture? I am giving a lecture. That could be why I'm thinking of it. So, um, <laughs> you know, I usually wear a, a cross on my lapel, and mm -hmm. I remember in D.C., um, a patient told me, uh, she was so excited, and she said, she said, Dr. Gordon, I'm so happy to meet with you, and she said, you know, I, I called up my mom right away, and I said, after going to three different fertility clinics, I finally found a fertility specialist who believes in a God who's not himself. Even in DC. I wouldn't even have ever thought that until I went to the ASRM meeting. Oh last yes, year. and it was eye opening, wasn't it? It was very eye opening. It was eye opening for Linda. Yes. It was good though. It was good. It was all right. I don't know if I call it good, but well, it was, it was good to be. It was good to, to, to see that perspective. Uh, yes. Yeah, maybe we should bring the lionfish to the meeting. Did you want to complain? You want, that's right. You want to complain about flying fish? All right. <laughs> well, in case you've wasted a, a, another eight minutes of your life here with Facebook Friday with Dr. Gordon and Linda, have learned nothing about infertility today. I'm sure, right? Not really.
No. Yeah. Anyway, well, but maybe you'll learn something next week when I'm not here. I'm not here. I won't be here in the next two weeks. Because we have a special guest next week. We do next guests. week. Yeah. Special guest. About needles. Needles like the lionfish. Yeah. Right? Yes. Not poisonous. It will be awesome. It will. Yeah, special guest star. That's right. Right. Okay. Are you going to tell them who it is? In just in case you didn't show up. Oh, no. no. She has to up now. So yeah. we're going to be talking to Sarah Prater, who is at Reproductive Acupuncture. Tennessee Reproductive Acupuncture. Here local in yep. Knoxville. And she's going to be talking about reproductive acupuncture. That's right. That's right. Have you had acupuncture? Do you like acupuncture? I've never had acupuncture. I, I sorry, I had my, I had my uh, I messed up my shoulder when I moved here. And, uh, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's been around for thousands of years. Yeah. There's going to be some delay to it. But I'm kind of needle phobic, so I'm not like... I mean, Linda, I mean, you, you saw me. You jabbed me yesterday with my flu shot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know. It was nice. <laughs> wow. Ah. And now the truth, the truth now comes out mm. even after I fell on my sword last week. You no. see, that's all right. It bears a little bit of a grudge. I did not hurt It's all right. It's all right. I did anyway, not hurt Anyway, anyway, you have to go. Y'all have happy a wonderful Friday. weekend. Happy Friday. Enjoy this beautiful fall weekend.